Yuma Daf Mem Hey, before I read the email, today I received two pictures that actually describe the tremendous achdos and camaraderie that we have in the Shir. The first picture comes from a wedding of Rabbi Yankel Schoenberg on the right, that was in England, and Rabbi Nard David as a guest, two old chaver that are tremendous parts of the Shir. The other picture, they don't have the white beards and the black hats, two balabatim, the colored shirt, Mati Middledorf from Ramah Bachemish, who went to America. And he decided when he's there to go visit someone who he's never met in his life, but he knows him through the Shir, Mark Ashkenazi, and they sat in the shoes for over two and a half hours. Tremendous achtos, and it brings the Rebbein Shalom tremendous amount of nachas. The first email, or the only email today, is from Aaron Kessley, he says, My brothers, Binyamin Eliezer, as well as my father, have been part of the MDY for a while. Binyamin has made every effort to get me involved. During Pesach, I went through some of the YouTube shirum and I really jumped in with the free Yuma that was sent to me. Since joining the MDY family, I've purchased the Arch Shas. And my 14-year-old son Yaakov has kept up with the Dav since Dav base. So the entire family, grandchild, his children, it's unbelievable. So, besides all that, I've been at Cherub Brach the other night, and during one of the day retire when the person tied the parish of the Yuma, which I was able to re- relate, which gave me a tremendous sense of pride. And he says, before joining MDY, I last learned Gemara in high school 20 some odd years ago. Aaron Kessler, building manager, Yeshiva of Central Queens. Unbelievable. Shkoyach, Reb Aaron. So Yuma Dafim, hey, Rev Chizda says that there are seven types of gold. One is called Zahav gold, then there's Zav Taiv, Oifir, Mupaz. These are all in the Psukim. Paz, similar to a gem, it shines like a gem. Shachut, it's like a chut, like a string, it's very thin, you can make clothing out of it for the Kangalo. Sagur, closed, it closes all the stores, once somebody sells this, nobody else could sell gold. Parvayim, it has the color of a par, of a bull, of the blood of the bull. Ravashi says, let's take off Zav and Zav type, and we're left with five. Mubaz, Eifer, Shachut, Sagur, and Parvayim. But in each one of the five, there are two types, there's regular Zav, the simple one, and the Zav type, that when you put it in a fire, it's going to stay the same weight. In the Mishnah it says, every day, during the year, they used yellow shovels for the coals. But in Yom Kippur they used the red one, which is the parvayim, which is the highest quality of gold. Every day of the year, the Ketairis is very fine. Because it says in the Pazim, V'shochak Tomim and Ahodek. But in Yom Kippur, it's dako min adak, it's finer than fine. Because it says in the Pazim, Ketairis Ham Dako, you have to throw it through the grinder one more time. The Mishnah says, every day the coin goes up the ramp, on the right side of the ramp, which is the eastern side of the Mizbeach, when he gets to the top of the ramp, he makes a right turn because you should always turn to the right when you're performing the Avoida. On Yom Kippur, the Kayin Gadol goes right down the middle of the ramp because of the cover of the Kayin Gadol. He's showing the Rebbein that he's a Ben Bayes, he belongs here. According to Rebbe every day of the year, the Kayin Gadol goes up the middle of the ramp. The Kayin Gadol, on Yom Kippur, takes the Kitain Zav, a golden vessel, and he draws water from the kiyor, and that's how he does kiddush yadayim raglayim. Whereas during the year, he goes directly from the kiyor. It says in the pasuk, "Kiyor oila al moigta al mizbeach kolayla." There are two psukim that tell us that there are two marachos, at least two marachos according to everybody. The marach gdoila, where you throw all the karbanos on the big fire on the mizbeach, veish mizbeach tukat boy, is the marach shniyah. That's where you get the coals for the k'tayis. There's no shaila, and everybody agrees that from the pasuk veha eish, the extra vav and a hey. Teach us that on Yom Kippur there's a third fire to take the calls for the special ptires of Yom Kippur. However, according to Rabbi Yehuda, every day there's only two like these psukim one for the karbanis, one for ptires. And on Yom Kippur, as we said, we add one more for ptires. Rabbi Yaisi says, though, every day of the year there are three marachis, three fires on top of the Mizbech. The third one is for Kiyom Eish Maracha, in order for there to be fire, just in case the larger fire goes out or is going out. And from the Pasuk that Rabbi Yaisi learns that there's a third one, Kima Eish, Rabbi Huda, who argues on Rabbi Yaisi and says there's only two fires, learns the idea of Hatzazaz al Yasa, that when you light the splinters, you start off the fire, it should be on top of the Mizbech, don't do it on the bottom of the floor of the Azar. Aaron is a Kayan, we know that. So the Akayan is very extra. So from here we learn that. You need a Kayan who's kosher to start the fire, but he also has to be wearing the big day kuhuna, that's Kayan. Rita learns that it's also for Zara for Yisrael to stand on the bottom of the Azara and blow with a bellows and reach the top of the Mizbech. You have to be on top of the Mizbech. 
Rabbi Meir argues on everybody. On Rabbi Yossi and Yudah, he says, every day there are four fires. What's the extra fourth? That is if there are extra varim meat from the karbanas, you put it on the fourth one. He learns it from the word ve'esh, the extra vav. Rabbanon who don't learn the extra esh, the extra vav, and they don't have the fourth ma'aracha. So what happens to the extra meat, the meat that didn't burn out completely? It wasn't consumed by the mizbeach. Alam mizbeach say chachamim, that you take the meat off the ma'aracha, every single morning we have to make a new ma'aracha, we have to put the wood, brand new wood, and what do you do with the meat? You put it on the side of the mizbeach, there's no room, you put it on the kevesh, you put it on the soivev, you have to put it from halfway up the mizbeach and on, otherwise there's a problem of lina. If you take the meat off the mizbeach, it's, it le- was left overnight, and it becomes puzzles, so you don't want it to become puzzles, so you leave it on the Mizbeah, but it has to be from the halfway up point. Remeyer learns that only Ikuli Ayla, these are parts of the Ayla that fly off the Mizbeah, you put back on the Mizbeah, but you don't put back Ikuli Ktaris, if something Ktaris flies off, you don't put that back. The calls of the Ktaris, and after Shimon and Sadiq was Nifter, and you have to light the Minari from somewhere, you light it from the Mizbeah. It's the Mizbech, Achitzang, the outer Mizbech. How do we know? Because it says, Eish Tamid. Eish Tamid is the menorah that always lights. Tukadal Mizbech, Loi Sikhbe. That there should be a constant fire on the outer Mizbech. The coals of the Machta that are in the shovel also from the outer Mizbech. Why? Because it says, Milifne Hashem. From with, in front of Hashem. In other words, there's some of the Mizbech that's in front of Hashem, facing the opening of the Kaddish Gadashim, and some of it not. The western side is facing the Kaddish Gadashim, some not. So it teaches us that you're supposed to take the coals from the part of the Mizbech that's facing the Kaddish Gadashim. In other words, part of the western side of the Mizbech is facing the opening, part of it is hidden. You should take from the part that's actually facing. But if you don't take from that part, the Pasuk tells us, Alam Mizbech, it's okay, you took it from the Mizbech, and you're Yaitza. Have a wonderful day.